Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm filming my November wrap up for Nonfiction November. So at time of filming there are actually still a couple of days of November left but I really doubt I'm going to get any books finished in that time so I figure I might as well do a wrap up of what I've read so far and also like what I'm currently reading that will be drifting over into December. Now spoiler alert, Nonfiction November was a colossal failure on my part this year. This has probably been my worst reading month I've had since beginning my channel um, and I will get into why at the very end of the video if you are interested in a general life update. So I have three non-fiction books to talk about that I finished, two that I have currently on the go, and then a bunch of middle grade that I'll talk about towards the end of the video that did make up the bulk of my reading throughout the month of November. So what did I actually read for non-fiction November? Let's jump into that. The three at least were three on my TBR, so they are at least ones that I did say I was going to read, even if I didn't get to the majority of the ones that I wanted to. So one of the books I finished is Viking Britain by Thomas Williams. Uh, this I listened to on audiobook and it's a history of Viking Britain, as the title does indeed suggest. So it's a look at who were the Vikings, what impact did they have on British history, what are some of the misconceptions we have of the Vikings, and and where did they end up kind of going. I generally enjoyed this book, I kind of think I gave it around like a 3.5 star. What I really liked was the stuff that was more about the culture of the Vikings and also their religion and general conversations about like how Viking mythology has been understood in more modern day and kind of how the, the mythos of the Vikings have been taken and they're a very misunderstood in terms of like misrepresented group of people and indeed how difficult it is to kill them like one group of people. The bit where this book really lost me was a lot of the military history and the kind of various iterations of battles just because that's a side of, of history that I'm less interested in in general. I also do think that they kind of got bogged down with details in a few places and we did have the random interludes into Thomas Williams's own life and own like interactions with the Vikings and like various trips he'd taken which I just didn't think added anything to the conversation which is why it was kind of a 3.5 star. Generally I think it is interesting and is a great place to start if you are interested in Vikings as a general kind of thing and I do feel like I did learn a lot um, but it's not one of my favourite history books and it's not one that I'm going to necessarily reach for again if that makes sense. Another one I finished for Nonfiction November is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This was my first foray into YA nonfiction which I didn't actually realise at the time of picking it up. This is called A Memoir Manifesto and it's basically like the title, like that kind of subtitle suggests, it's a combination of George's life mainly through his childhood and then also a kind of manifesto going forward about what it means to be queer and sort of um, the idea of kind of taking ownership for your own life. It's a bit of a mishmash of a book, there are kind of sections of it dedicated to various different family members, um, some of it gets a little bit preachy and on the nose, there's a lot of like explaining the, the morals and the lessons of various points of his story, but ultimately I do think it was generally a very good book and given that its target audience is YA, I think if you were a queer teenager who was looking for someone who you could like identify with and kind of see stories echoed and basically find hope, I do think that this book definitely would provide that. And I'm really pleased that stories like this are getting more of a spotlight, more opportunity to be heard. It's just one that like, it's YA and it's not actually written for me, so it wasn't like the best reading experience in the world if that makes sense, but very very powerful um, and yeah I think it's it's worth a read if you like memoirs in general. Then a final non-fiction that I finished was Bonk by uh, Mary Roach. Mary Roach is a science writer and Bonk is about the curious science uh, behind sex and it was exactly what I wanted in the moment. It was fantastic. Mary Roach has got a really crass humour style. She kind of picks individual topics and then does big deep dives into them. This is the fifth book of hers that I've read and I just really love her style. She was actually surprisingly prudish in this one compared to some of the toilet humour I've heard from her previously, but it was generally really interesting conversations about sort of like the um, history of sort of infertility, um, the orgasm, uh, the clitoris in general, like all sorts of different stuff. There was conversations about like toys and masturbation. It was generally really, really fascinating and it also looked at, like the stigma around the trying to study like studying sex and how to get funding and how difficult that can be and like then the problems that that creates around sort of the validity of the studies because of the issues of sample sizes and all sorts of things like that like generally a really good one and I think that if you are a fan of science writing and you haven't picked up a Mary Roach yet you totally should and it'd just be a case of picking whichever one is the most interesting to you but I would put this one up there as a fun one to read. So those are the non-fiction books that I finished let's talk about two that I have on the go at the moment. Last night I started Queer Intentions by Amelia Abraham this is a personal journey through LGBTQ plus culture. Now I was expecting this to be more of a history of LGBTQ plus culture 
culture but it's actually more of kind of a collection of general discussions about what does it mean to be queer in a space and to be part of the LGBTQ plus community and the first chapter that I read is talking about marriage and the concept of marriage and the um, various processes of like legalizing same-sex marriage and like what does that mean to same-sex individuals or people within this community. Um, it's been generally really really interesting so far and um, Amelia Abraham is actually a journalist so she has a really lovely light writing style and I've enjoyed the elements of memoir and the elements of like going out and talking to other people and kind of the conversations of social concepts and like how important the legitimacy of your relationship within the wider context of society is. So I'm really really interested in where else she's going to go with this. Another one that I'm about 50% of the way through is A Forger's Tale, Confessions of the Bolton Forger by Sean Greenhalgh. This is about a gentleman who um, basically built a career out of forging a huge variety of different art pieces that he then sold on um, pretending that they were the kind of originals for lots and lots of money and then he did get caught and he spent four years in prison and this is his story like after being in prison and kind of how did it happen um it's good fun i like it when he kind of dives into more of the techniques of the art history in general and like how did he get there some of the forays into his like memoir in general feel a little bit um tangential and kind of pointless and he definitely has uh some awkward moments where he's He's kind of a little bit like, oh, I don't know if we can say that anymore. It's that PC about just like weird stuff that I just don't think is particularly necessary. Um, but you can tell he's not actually a writer. He is somebody who is writing a book about their life because they did something cool and interesting. And I think a ghostwriter would have been a good shout on this one. But overall, I'm enjoying it more than I'm not enjoying it. And when he gets into like the super technical stuff about art history and like the different techniques of how he actually mimicked these various um, sort of originals, that is where it, he like really comes into his own and it is fantastic. Fantastic. so when he does that I'm definitely happy so yeah like I said halfway through generally enjoying it think it's really interesting so uh, those are the non-fiction books that I read but I did read a bunch of middle grade so one of them that I finished is The House of Many Ways by Diana Wynne Jones this is book three in the Howl kind of trilogy although they are independent books that happen to contain some of the same characters going through so the last one is focused on our young heroine called Charmaine who um, is being sent to her uncle's house who is a famous wizard to basically look after his house whilst he's ill and away for treatment and it's about the kind of various things that she stumbles into the friends that she makes and this kind of big plot that she ends up being embroiled in i like diana Wynne jones i think she's really classic she's kind of an iconic ya slash middle grade writer from sort of the late 90s to early 2000s house moving castle is absolutely iconic and i do think that this one as well as book two which is called the castle in the air i believe i just nowhere near as strong but also some of that might just be the sheer amount of nostalgia I have wrapped up with House Moving Castle especially with the Studio Ghibli movie. I think I liked book three slightly more than book two um, just because Sophie and Hal who are kind of our main protagonists from book one featured more in it and actually I'm not here for all of these extra characters I'm here for Sophie and Hal and Calcifer and all the kind of like original crew um, so because of that but it was really enjoyable and it was really lovely as a bit of a kind of um, palette cleanser light reading experience. I also read, I think, eight of the Animorphs books by K.A. Applegate. I'm not 100% certain exactly how many because they kind of run into each other. Um, I've been kind of reading the Animorphs books on and off now for about a year and if you haven't heard of them before basically they were a middle grade series from again kind of the 90s sort of time similar time to Diana Wynne Jones very much in my childhood and they're five kids who get the ability to morph into animals once they've absorbed their DNA and they get given this ability by an alien who has kind of crash landed and is, t informs them that the world is actually actually like the battleground between two opposing alien forces. The Yerks who like to take over people's brains but they're like little slug things that crawl in your ear and take over your head and then the Andalites who are trying to stop the Yerks from taking over yet another planet. So these five kids end up becoming the uh, kind of front line against this battle whilst the Andalites race to try and get to the planet to be able to help them a little bit more and it's about the whole experience. I'm in like books tw like kind of the late 20s now, um, maybe even reaching up to like book 30 or so I'm definitely about halfway through the series as a whole so things are really starting to kind of heat up we've got some of the really like iconic story arcs that this series went through um there's a lot more darkness happening you can see the kind of character development of these these kids who have been involved in this war now for quite a while and they've seen a lot of battles and like how is it changing their personality 
as conversations about the brutality of war and whether they're losing kind of their humanity in this process and sort of what does winning genuinely mean to them. I love this series because I think it is really, really good at um, not shying away from like the brutal reality of what it would genuinely be like to be a kid locked in these kind of battles. I do find that some of the more modern middle grade can be like, yeah, and then they did their homework and everything was completely fine and nobody had nightmares from this. Whereas this one really confronts the fact that this is like, very traumatic experiences that these kids are going through. Also because we're getting a little bit more developed, the first sort of 10 to 15 books do follow the same kind of plot form, so it was getting a little repetitive, whereas these ones have now started to play around with that format. We're getting kind of like mini arcs, so sort of there's a few trilogies forming within the overarching story. There's the fairly infamous David trilogy that if you know the series you know what I'm on about. I don't want to spoil it necessarily, but that was very very cool and a real like means justifying the ends, can they really go this far kind of a, a moment, which I loved. So I fully expect to be continuing with the Animorph series going forward a little bit more. So those are the books that I read and in case you were curious about my life and why suddenly my reading is tanked after being able to normally finish anywhere from like 10 to 15 fairly heavy duty books a month, it's because I have a new job and I'm really really excited about it but it does mean that I have like no mental headspace for reading at the moment. So I've completely changed industries and I'm now working um, in a veterinary practice. I'm one of the uh, veterinary assistants which basically means I'm just unqualified and I'm there to give help um, because during Covid we can't have um like the owners in the rooms so I'm kind of a combination of an animal wrangler and a cleaner and it's really really good fun and I'm just lending hand wherever I can and the intention is to go on to do a veterinary nursing qualification at some point next year whether it be an apprenticeship or going back to school I'm not too sure yet but it basically means that this month's reading completely nosedived because I just had less time going from being essentially part-time furloughed to back to full-time work plus was quite tired and didn't really have the, like I said, the headspace because I was learning so many new things. So my December TBR, which will already be out, but I'm about to film next, um, it's probably going to be a little bit more relaxed and chilled and fully expect the reading to kind of calm down a little bit on this channel, but we've had a fairly good year in fellow, so I'm totally okay with that. So how did your non-fiction November go? Were you more successful than me? What do you think to the books I read? Have you read the Animorphs books? Do let me know in the comments down below. Have a wonderful reading week and I will chat to you soon. Bye.